Hey there. Welcome to another Zambezi Flora video. I am here in Lilai Lodge yet again. Um, we've had good rain so far this year. Things are coming up pretty quickly um, and it's just lovely to see. So beside me here, I have a fantastic member of the milkweed family. This is Staphnostelma spectabili, sorry. It is in the Aposinaceae family, subfamily, Schlepidoidae. Um, and it just produces these fantastic bright orange, almost like fire engine orange, fairly large flowers. Here it's attracted this blister beetle that you might be able to see. There's been a number of butterflies that have been fluttering around this as I have been setting up here. But it is just such a sight to behold when you're traveling through the Miombo. Um, let's hope that there is more to see and let's go have a look at what else there is. So here we have this little member of the orchid family. This is a Ceterium anomalum. Um, these flowers do not stand out exceedingly well. They're, they're quite small, but the kind of pearly white color of them is quite nice. They do range from greenish to purplish to whitish like this. Um, very easily recognizable with the spur. They're, now, Ceterium always have two spurs. But on this species, they curve up from the flower, so we can just see them here. Again, the flowers on these are very small. The lip in Ceterium, unlike most other of the terrestrial genera, is actually on the top of the flower and not on the bottom of the flower. Um, and then the spurs just kind of curve up like this. Uh, this area is very well known here for having a fairly good orchid flora um, amongst the whole of the lodge flora and it's nice to see because this is just starting to bloom so it's still got quite a bit more to go but we just come at the perfect time to see the first few flowers at the very bottom of the inflorescence open. So this is a little exciting for me. I have not come across this plant before and you might not even really notice it easily off the bat we have this little member of the Fabaceae family in the uh, subfamily Faboidae, or I think it used to be Papillonidae. This is a Macrotyloma species. I'm not sure which. This is the first time I say I've come across it here in the woodlands. Um, and they generally tend to have these kind of greenish white flowers. Um, I will have to look it up and see if I can't figure out what species it is. Um, but it is quite a nice little find and I'm quite excited about this. So another species to add to the list here at the lodge and a little bit of a mystery for me at the moment. But with that, then on this side over here, I don't even know if we can see this very well. We've also got these little Psychotria. This is um, Psychotria pumilla. Um, pumilla being dwarf or small, and as you can see, it is quite small. I get the grasses in the way too here. This is a, a fantastic little plant. It exists across the woodlands throughout the, the lodge area here in the Miombo section, um, and will be followed with these little white flowers by little red berries when they ripen. So another nice little find here, but this one less surprising than the Macrotyloma there. So again, on the floor of the woodland here, with a tiny little one that might not easily appear in this kind of video, but I'll have closer up photos of it. This is Dorstenia bengualensis. This is in the Moraceae family or the fig family. Um, and it does produce a little white, bit of latex, not very much latex, but a tiny bit of latex if the leaves are broken. It's actually more on the on the broken leaf here. Um, now, unlike most members of the uh, fig family, this is a herbaceous perennial. It dies down to a little tuber below ground to then sprout during the rainy season, um, but still then produces the interesting kind of receptacles. These are more flat and not curved over as it is in a fig. And this species here, has these wonderful, almost like star-like uh, receptacles um, with these little uh, appendages 
that come off of the um, central disc part of it. Uh, there are a few different species in, in Zambia. Bengulensis, the easiest to tell apart because of the round receptacle and the way that these little rays come off of them, um, of, of the receptacle, as I said. There are quite a few different forms of this across Zambia. Um, I'm not necessarily convinced that they all form the exact same species because when you look at the different forms, some of them can be vastly different. But I'm not the taxonomist at the moment, um, and I can just say from my experience as to what I tend to, to think of these. Um, as my mom would probably say, it's a tiny little flower, it's got my interest, and this one definitely does. Um, stunning little plants, you have to be really on the lookout to find them because at this height of about 30 centimeters, amongst all the grasses, you can easily miss it if you walk by. We're here by a nice clump of Ancelia africana. Um, there's actually quite a bit of this around the Lai Lodge. This one, a little different in terms of the size of these leaves. They, you know, they're almost two inches across. Um, very different from most of the ones that are around here that have much more narrow lanceolate leaves. Um, and this is quite an old clump, as you can see here. Um, now, there used to be another clump that was up here, and you can just make out the remnants of the roots where they were. But if we can zoom in here, you can see this massive kind of scratch mark. And this has actually not been affected by a human. This has been torn off by one of the animals here at the lodge. Um, I'm not exactly sure why. Would have been something big like a kudu or something along those kinds of lines. But this is a gouge mark from the horns. Now, luckily, we came across this um, before it sat for too long. So we just kind of shifted the clump to this side over here. Um, it has this fantastic seed pod. I'm hoping to be able to come back and collect a bit of seed from this when it is ripe, if I'm lucky. Um, but it's nice to see now we've got some of these new little green tips to the, to the roots. So it looks like it is now adapting to its new home, which I'm quite happy about and hopefully will live many, many more years um, on, on this tree. Not the best one. You see it's got quite the, the, uh, the damage to its trunk. But that said, this thing could still be upright for another several decades. It's hard to say. But... Here's hoping that this one has a long, fruitful life in this new location. So I'm in this little bit of a sunken area here. Uh, I'm not sure how it would have formed. It's got some of these fantastic boulders in it, beautiful um, blankets of, of moss growing over them. Um, out of this, in some areas, we have little Kalinkoe lanceolata uh, plants starting to come up. Uh, they won't be in flower until the dry season. Um, this area does have um, some a uh, aspects of, of wildlife coming through. There's actually a little trail here leading just to the side over here where there is a warthog hole in the ground. Um, usually I love these kind of spaces. They tend to collect more water. They tend to be a lot more um, cooler. So you get things that would grow in here that might not grow in other places. Um, I'm not seeing too much in here. Uh, there is a little oxalis species that we have here growing on the walls, which is quite nice. We got it right here. I'll get close-ups of that in flower. Um, but on the whole, not too, too much going on. But I did want to point out this very interesting bracket fungi right here. It's got some fantastic colors on it. Nice, lovely, rusty red um, on the new layer on it. The color spectrum, actually, from the oldest sections through to the newer sections is, is quite lovely as well. I have no idea what bra bracket fungus this is, but um, definitely quite a beautiful one. And, and at least it's not in in danger of killing this tree because it's already dead. So this thing is dead, although now we've got 
the Kalinkoe lanceolata also growing out of it too. So this is one of the smallest orchids I have found here at the lodge. Uh, unfortunately, I will not be able to even get video of it because it's so small. I will put some of the best pictures I have up of it, but it is these little tiny plants here. This is a species of Malaxis, Malaxis slibenii. Um, they do not really grow taller than this. With that little inflorescence there, it might get to about, you know, five, six centimeters above the ground level. Um, but other than that, these things are absolutely tiny. Um, the flowers are greenish, greenish yellow. They don't stand out very much. They are something that you would be definitely more of a botanical oddity. I have no idea what we even pollinate them because they are so tiny. Um, but this is probably the most, uh, the, the strangest orchid find that I've come across here on the uh, lodge property. Um, and only in this little section here. And there's a fairly good sized clump of them growing. So I imagine actually they probably spread as much through vegetative growth as they do through seed. But there are outliers further that lie further away from the main clump. So they are obviously gradually spreading. Um, but definitely an interesting plant uh, and a nice one to add to the list. Here we have a nice little clump of a Fadagia species. I'm not exactly sure which one it is at the moment. I'll have to, uh, to take a sample and key it out back at the house. Um, same family as a coffee, Rubiaceae. Um, most of these are usually fairly short herbaceous perennials producing annual shoots as I've come up here, um, one to many stems, and then usually have the flowers in the leaf axles as we have them here. Um, little clusters of uh, yellow flowers on this species, almost tiny, you know, less than half a centimeter corolla tube on it. Um, the corolla lobes, quite a nice actual yellow color in all fairness, but, uh, but they're also not very, very long. I'm not 100% certain what species this is, um, so yeah, I'll have to, uh, to press a few specimens and take it home with me, but should be fairly easy to key out in the end. But I've seen it uh, a bit here and there. This is probably actually the nicest clump that I've seen with the most open flowers and developing uh, fruits on it. And I will, yeah, figure it out what it is and uh, post the name underneath. So just in behind me here, we have Multidentia crassa. I can't remember the subspecies though at the moment. Um, it is also a member of the coffee family, Rubiaceae. Now, unlike coffee, which produces small berries, this produces a fairly large fruit with a single stone, sometimes two stones in the center of it. Um, but you'll almost never find the fruits because here, especially in this woodland, the monkeys will get it long before we would ever find it. Um, they're quite nice. They can be um, quite dry because if they dry on the tree, then most of the moisture is gone, but they're still quite sweet at that point in time. This is not in fruit yet. It is in flower, and this is probably the best flowering of a specimen like this that I've ever seen. Usually these are, uh, are quite haggard. This one is too, having quite old stems that are broken here and there, um, but it is still quite a nice find to see it in flower and doing quite this well. Yeah, that's going to be it for me today. The weather seems to be changing. Uh, it's been a very wet week so far. I got caught out earlier this week in a downpour and got completely soaked. I don't want a repeat of that. Um, it's been a, a fairly good morning though. Um, I think the highlight for me was that um, macro tyloma I'll hopefully be able to key that out. There's a few things I'll have to press when I get home as well. Um, but if you liked the video, please hit the like button, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. So I'm on my way out. Couldn't help but stop by a termite mount. This is actually quite a nice large one. It's not in terms of large, in terms of height of it. But it's actually quite broad. It's, it's probably a good 
uh, 20 or 30 meters um, in, in diameter. Um, there's always something about termite mounds. You just never know what you're going to find. Um, and yeah, this is a cissus. I'm not exactly sure what species it is. I will take a uh, part of it um, to press and see. I can, I can take a bit of it and leave other remaining pieces that could hopefully still um, form seeds and um, propagate. It's the only one I found in this area. It's the only one I found actually on, on the property here since I've been going around over the last several years. It's got these lovely uh, digitate leaves with uh, quite interesting serrated leaflets there. The stem is quite succulent and then it's got these kind of like raised ridges to it. So I'm not exactly sure what species this is at the moment, but uh, I'll again also put it underneath uh, at the bottom of the video so you can see. Um, but this is actually also quite a nice find um, and I'm glad I stopped. So, all right, that's it. I'm out of here. Cheers.